Currently we have over 60 species of young forest wildlife in decline. These species will only decline so long before they're gone. Having that conversation with us could change the future of wildlife and the habitat they live in. To preserve that legacy, we really need to act and work together with agencies, the Division of Wildlife, partners like the Rough Grouse Society. The Rough Grouse Society is a nonprofit organization who works to preserve upland sporting traditions by working with private landowners, state and federal agencies to create and enhance young forest habitat. In Ohio specifically, we've seen a precipitous decline in the rough grouse population due to a lack and loss of young forest habitat from zero to 20 years old. This lack of forest age class diversity and loss of young forest habitat has also resulted in a precipitous decline in not only the rough grouse population, but also the populations of American woodcock and other young forest dependent species, such as migrant songbirds, who rely on these areas for breeding habitat. When you look into a forest that's overgrown, it's open. They don't feel protected. They're very susceptible to predation. Vertical structures, which they're lacking, an area that's been cut creates so much cover and diversity for wildlife. What we need to start thinking about is harvesting trees again in certain ways that could benefit wildlife populations. In the Division of Wildlife, private lands biologists or wildlife professional is here to help you, guide you along the way. If we don't start cutting now, we're gonna lose the species that are in decline. The ability to pursue these iconic game birds in Ohio and the sporting traditions that go along with this pursuit are under threat. Right now we need all hands on deck to turn the clock back and reset a lot of these habitats and bring back healthy young forest habitat within the state. The Rough Grouse Society is working with a diversity of different partners, including the Ohio DNR, Division of Wildlife, through Young Forest Initiatives, and we've closely been developing programs which will address these issues and allow us to face these challenges head on. I get a phone call from a landowner, and they've got an amount of property that they want to manage, but they don't know where to go. So at that point, I usually find out what their goals are, find out what it is they exactly they want to do, and then we'll set up a meeting. At that point, I can kind of get a feel for what, what it is they want. Are they grouse hunters? Are they bird watchers? Are they, do they just like to come and camp on their property for an enjoyable weekend? Um, so finding out a little bit about the landowner and what makes them tick will determine which direction to go. You know, maybe their habitat is grown into that mature stage of forest and they want to cut or they want to hire a logger. They're not exactly sure how to do it. We provide that information for them, uh, who to go to, service foresters, consulting foresters, and give them good sound biological advice for whatever species they want to manage for. But together, working as a partner, this is going to be a long-term sustainable management plan. Creating young forest habitat is critical right now in this point in time. Cutting trees like aspen can regenerate thousands of shoots, creating the protective cover and vertical structure wildlife need. Releasing the canopy regenerates oak. Oak suppressed in the understory will never thrive. This is why we need to start cutting timber now. The other thing that could be done is if you're trying to promote oak growth, and you got competition with another species is we can do what we call a crop tree release. So you go in and you target the non-timber value trees. Those kind of things will help promote the oak and actually give it a chance to get into the canopy and uh, uh, be a tree that grows and matures and produces lots of acorns. Um, the other things you can do just involve a simple chainsaw. Say you've got a large hillside full of uh, mature woods and you don't really want to get into the whole clear-cut timbering thing. Uh, you can go in and create a little opening just on your own. Uh, we're talking half acre to five acres. Something that you can do yourself with just two or three people and a chainsaw. And uh, you can create brush piles, down tree structures. Uh, there's just so many things you can do with just just having a chainsaw with you. So it doesn't require having large machinery. With the majority of forested land in Ohio under private ownership, there are technical assistance and cost share opportunities with several programs to receive assistance both from private lands biologists with the Ohio DNR and also the Rough Grouse Society. Please feel free to reach out to any of us for additional assistance.